Today we are talking about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things that you need to do in order to maintain the health of your sister locks. I'm all about doing the 20% that creates 80% of the result in your life. Regardless of what's going on, that 20-80 rule, I try to apply it as, as much as I can. So of these six things, you'll find two things that I actually and kind of biased towards that you need to be doing anyway in addition to the other things if you choose to do them. That'll give you the most bang for your buck. You're with Tunisia Ali of Tunisia's Locks and Beauty Tips and I hope you find these things beneficial to you. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to like and definitely engage me with comments. If you have specific questions or certain things you want to know that I might be able to help you with or share, feel free. I love to interact and as well if you're already a subscriber to the channel. I appreciate you, sis. Okay, the first thing, I'm gonna go through all six and then I'll get specific. You wanna limit the amount of styling and handling, number one. Number two, you wanna uh, style or only use natural products. Number three, you wanna avoid heat. Number four, you wanna make sure that you don't overwash. Number five, choose your luxuries carefully. Number six, you wanna make sure that you help your loctician and yourself by doing certain things prior to your retightening. And then number seven, you wanna monitor and resolve any issues as quickly as possible. Okay, let's get into number one. Uh, handling your hair and styling it. I gotta tell you, since I started this channel, I was doing a little bit more to my hair than normal just during the first week, and I've only had the channel for a little over a month, maybe four and four to five, six weeks, and just the additional pulling on my scalp made my scalp sore and made my hair tender. If you guys started the channel, started seeing the channel along with me, you know that I do very little with my hair. So that's made a difference, and I decided, other than what I'm doing for the channel, I'm not gonna be putting a lot of style and stress on my hair, doing a lot of styles, because I really feel like my um, my strategy has worked well for me up to this point. I didn't even do my hair today, and then I've been out and about. I have these little pipe cleaners to secure, and I don't think my hair looks bad, so there's some mornings where I get up, not because I'm lazy, but because the extra stress on the hair is just not necessary. So I didn't do anything to my hair. So that illustrates my point. The more you pull on your hair, the more tension you put on it, especially in the back, which is why it's usually shorter in the back, because of, that wasn't, that one made me a liar, because of the tension and stress from the rubbing. So the next area that is going to be affected is gonna be around here, right? So when you're doing this and you're trying to be cute and you're doing all of that, you're putting extra stress around your hair and this is one of the most vulnerable areas. And as well, you know, when people get traction alopecia or they start losing hair, where does it happen first? Usually here and here. So you want to be careful about that. Number two, stick with natural products. That's all I use on my hair. And I guarantee you, ladies, that's why my hair is healthy. I only use natural products that I make myself. I can count the times that I've used anything else. A couple of times I used some mousse when I did a curl out. But other than that, I use stuff that I make on my hair. Number one, it's cheaper in the long run. Although the, some of the items may seem expensive, it's cheaper in the long run because it's an initial investment that you find that you seldom find yourself having to actually make another time around within a year or two. And then secondly, because your hair is healthy, it's gonna save you money in the long run from trying to repair your hair. Number three, avoiding heat. I have curled these maybe once and when I, oh, once, twice at the most. And when I did, it was something around the front of my head that maybe I did my, my curls, my pipe cleaners or something else and a piece of hair up here didn't curl well or it came out or something. And so I wanted to put a little spiral in it, but um, I don't do that much. The only other heat that I will put on my hair if it's not summertime and sometimes even in the summer to save time is to blow dry my hair. And I just blow dry it until I get it mostly dry and then I go ahead and let the rest air dry most of the time as long as I know it's going to dry fully that has saved me I know it has the other thing is this is the most important thing I do other than very little styling and that is I don't overwash my hair I wash my hair every three to five weeks 
occasionally I've gone longer than that. Now, if I wash it at the three month mark, I mean at the three week mark, it's usually for a specific reason. Uh, maybe I've colored it or it's feeling some kind of way. Maybe I was at the beach, it had some sand in it. Maybe I was fooling around with the dog, giving her a bath and something got in my hair. There's a specific reason why I would wash it. It may start to feel like it needs to be washed for some particular reason. Maybe I was at the gym, maybe I was sweating and it felt like it needed to be washed. Not that I washed it because I was at the gym and I was sweating. So I do very little washing of my hair. My hair is still very clean. My scalp is always clean. It wasn't like this in the beginning because when I started my locks, I had dandruff. I had um, flakiness. I thought it was the water in Georgia that was giving me issues. But as I began to make my hair healthier and use natural products, I found out very quickly that it's the natural products that gave my hair an edge. And just so you know, I have a couple of um, videos about the shampoo that I make as well uh, as the moisturizer and conditioner that I make. And I'm going to add some more videos about some other spritzes and things that you can use on your hair to moisturize after you color or maybe if you have a problem uh, scalp issues and things like that so stay tuned for some of that but definitely um, though that that's something that I do that I stand by you do not have to overwash your hair okay even if you're sweating um, if you substitute the use of essential oils that are good for uh, uh, that are antimicrobial that are antibacterial that are moisturizing and conditioning you can eliminate this need to overwash worst case scenario if you're doing a lot of washing you can just simply wet your hair and rinse with water and it doesn't have to be entirely wet all the time Overwashing your hair dries it out and it strips your hair of important natural oils and protective constituents that are naturally a part of your hair. So if it's not required and you don't have to do it, don't do it. I'm not now, I know some people who go six months without washing their hair. I don't agree with that either. But what I am saying is let your hair tell you. Some people can take more washing, some people cannot. Some people's hair is, is low porosity and they find that it dries out a lot and when they wash it, it feels differently. So you're going to look at your, uh, the constituency of your peculiar hair, but in, as, as a general rule, you don't have to wash your locks as much as maybe you think. You can go anywhere from four to six weeks and sometimes maybe more. Now, if you look in your scalp and you see a lot of dead skin cells and you scratch up in this area and you get that stuff underneath your fingernail, you need to wash it, okay? Or you need to clean your scalp, in other words, which may not necessarily mean wash it. So that's really important. Choose your luxuries carefully, okay? It's kind of like our body. We can't like drink alcohol, smoke, eat crazy foods, fried foods, drink a lot of soda, don't drink water and expect to be okay, okay? If you drink and you decide you're gonna do everything else right, you might be able to go a while and get, get away with it, right? But you can't be messing up with everything and living the luxury life with your hair, meaning you're styling it, you're coloring it, you're washing it off, then you're putting crap in your hair and then expect it to be healthy. So for me, my luxury item is the dye. Y'all know I like color. I've been doing it now for two to three years. I was supposed to go three to four months and, and, and then you, I fell off the bandwagon last weekend and I started coloring again. But that's really the one thing that I do. Other than using those pipe cleaners or grayed outs um, once a month or once every four, five, six weeks, that's really all that I do with my hair. Granted, I'll be doing more to keep you guys entertained. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pick your luxuries carefully. Pick the one or two treats you like with your hair and do those things and give your hair a rest. Essentially, the more you do nothing with your hair, the more it's gonna grow. And when you think about it, that's why these locks are so good for our hair. It's the least styling stress if you consider dreadlocks and how they develop, right? You just pretty much leave your hair alone, you don't do anything, right? And you see it just growing by leaps and bounds. Hair typically grows six inches a year on average, between four to six, that's not an average, that's a range, but between four to six inches a year. So your hair is going to grow that length as long as you're not doing anything to take away from it. So that is really, really important. 
choosing your luxuries carefully and making sure that you pick one thing, maybe two every now and then that you treat yourself with and forget about the rest. These are an investment and they are so beautiful when they're healthy and they are really a trial and a tragedy when you start having problems. If you if you stroll the internet, control the internet and you see people having issues with their life, you, you don't want to be in that mix. And trust me, I believe over time, even the retightenings, depending upon the, the, the pressure that your loctician puts on your hair, that's something we have to consider, especially around here. I don't care what anybody says. I've seen some stories of people losing hair around here, and I feel like the long-term effects of a person who's heavy-handed can take a toll on your hair. So when you consider the cumulative effect of some of these things over time, do what you can to minimize that. The other thing, number six, which was about making things easier for your loctician and for yourself before retightening. And I'm going to do a video on this. When you go to get your retightening, and everybody retightens different, okay? But when you go to get your retightening, you go because it's time to get a retightening, right? Which means that you have new growth. That new growth becomes tangled and enmeshed and meshed together. And so when you're your loctician goes through there, she has to spend time pulling those apart, okay? Now, you got 600 of these to do. You're not going to tiptoe around these things uh, <laughs> just because. You're going to pull them apart, and you're sitting there getting your hair done, and some of it you may feel, and others of it, you maybe you're distracted reading a book or you're looking at your iPad. The point is, make this as easy as possible. Untangle it. Do what you can for your scalp prior to going to get your retightening so that you have less trauma to your head. Trauma is not always felt. Doesn't mean that trauma is not there. Believe me when I tell you that. So that is very, very key. And then the last thing is to monitor and resolve potential problems before they get out of hand, okay? If you see something going on with your locks, attempt to remediate that situation before it gets to be too much. Now, I already know. I colored my hair, I'm gonna be dealing with some excessive dryness, right? Or more dryness than normal. Feels great now because I put in that um, Vidal Sassoon conditioner, right? But that's right after the color. That's not gonna save me as this stuff continues to dry out with the winter coming on. So there's a special spritz that I'm gonna use that I use periodically that I make to help me get through that difficulty and to keep my locks feeling soft like I like for them to feel. I don't want them to feel crunchy, I want them to feel soft, all right? I want to make sure that this is healthy because if this is healthy, then these are going to be healthy, right? As above, so below. Ladies, I hope this video uh, helped you. Stay tuned for the next one, which I'm going to do is a healthy spritz for your hair. I'm going to do two types of healthy spritzes for your hair. And I also want to talk about some things to do if you have problem scalp. Uh, thank you for hanging in there with me. Lots of love to you. See this hair journey as a part of loving on you. So take care of it. It will pay, take care of your hair and your locks. It will pay off later. I love you guys. Thank you for just inspiring me and have a wonderful day.